Welcome to PCR TV and to Euro PCR 2019 here in Paris. We're here to discuss real world applications of intravascular lithotripsy using the shockwave technology. I'm here with uh, Benjamin Honton from uh, Clinique Pasteur in France and uh, with Nikos Werner from the Heart Center in uh, Trier in Germany. And we're going to be discussing the uses of uh, shockwave and talking about the technology and how this has really rapidly expanded over the last year from 60 cases in the first study, the Disrupt CAD1 study over a year ago, and now there are over 3,000 cases have been performed in Europe. So there's really been a, an astonishing expansion of this technology uh, and the European interventional community uh, I think are learning about uh, the applications of this in a whole wide range of coronary disease and also elsewhere. So I'm going to turn to Nikos uh, Werner first and I'd just like you to describe your understanding of the technology, just explain how this technology works and why you think it is impacting our patients. Yes, sure. Um, I think it's a very easy to use uh, system for lesion preparation in very calcified lesion. Um, it's a rapid exchange uh, balloon catheter and within this catheter there are multiple emitters, lithotripsy emitters included. Um, the balloon catheter is advanced into uh, the calcified lesion, it's inflated to four atmospheres. Um, and then you start the process of uh, creating uh, sonic pressure waves. Um, these come from the emitters, um, they hit the calcium um, and uh, induce cracks to the calcium, uh, while to the soft tissue they don't do any damage. And I think the nice thing is um, that they also ad that they address the uh, intimal calcium, but also the deeper medial uh, calcium uh, plaques uh, we see in our patients. And it comes in several sizes from 2.5 to 4 millimeters, 12 millimeters in length. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I think we have a new technology where we can uh, induce cracks to the calcium and uh, prepare adequate lesion preparation in heavy calcified lesions. Okay, thank you. So we're at the point now with three clinical studies. Uh, Disrupt CAD3 has just started to re recruit in Europe. Um, it's already going in the, the US. Um, we have 3,000 patients uh, have been treated so far in uh, Europe. I'm gonna turn to you uh, Benjamin. So in your experience, um, what are the clinical scenarios in which you would um, be using uh, shockwave technology? We, we have been focusing on figure out what kind of plaque can be targeting by shockwave. And you know that in, in the study, concentric lesion was the targeting, but we learned from the real world that it works in eccentric plaques. There is several reports for that. Um, and as Nico said, the interest of the, of the shockwave therapy is that it's targeting the deeper calcium and mm -hmm. it can change the result on mm -hmm. the compliance of the vessel. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's my first choice strategy now in my cat lab practice when I see uh, a calcified plaques, eccentric or concentric and not suitable for arteriotomy, mm -hmm. I use shockwave as a first intention for preparation mm -hmm. of the lesion now. And are you making that judgment on the basis of angiography or do you, are you using a lot of intravascular imaging? What, what's your usual practice now for assessing the sort of calcium burden? Yeah, it, it's an important question. In, in our daily practice, we use angiography to assess calcium, but we know okay. that it underestimated the, the percentage of calcium in the artery. Mm -hmm. So now we are prone to use uh, intravascular imaging as OCT mm -hmm. and to be, to be sure that it's a good... You can, you can use as 180 mm -hmm. degrees calcium arc lithotripsy work. Mm -hmm. work. So uh, we don't... Uh, use every time, but it's, it's good to, to indicate the, the therapy. So, Nikos, have you been using OCT at all to yes, look Yes, um, definitely. Calcium? I think we have two different clinical scenarios. The first scenario is that we see in angiography a lot of calcification. So we are uh, experiencing or are we expecting uh, problems with uh, uh, lesion preparation. I think in these cases it's very nice to use it as a first-line strategy. Um, on the other hand, you sometimes have uh, situations where you have uh, where you think 
calcification is not so heavy, you proceed with your lesion preparation and then you are surprised that the balloon is, uh, doesn't open. Uh, you use high pressure balloon, maybe even ultra high pressure balloons and balloon doesn't open up. So yes, I think OCT usage of OCT or IVUS as well is a very good thing uh, to be prepared of what you are expecting mm -hmm. uh, for lesion preparation. So um, all of us are experienced um, operators, but once in a while, we are always uh, we go uh, we are surprised mm. about the heavy calcification we mm. have to deal with, right? So, so Benjamin, perhaps you can describe a, a clinical scenario or a particular case that convinced you that this was a technology that performs in the way that we hope it does. I think one of major challenging situation is right coronary ostium with okay. uh, uh, eccentric plaques mm -hmm. which make atelectomy difficult and potentially dangerous and we have very good results uh, with the use of shockwave on the ostium of, mm -hmm. the, of the right coronary artery. Because it's eccentric, maybe it's quite different and you can may need more energy mm -hmm. to crack the, the calcium, but it works very well. Uh, so in your experience, do you get full stent expansion at the ostium? Definitely. And that would be superior to the results that you've had with other forms of calcium modification or, or where it's been difficult to use calcium modification? I think the only comparator would be aterectomy. Right. And aterectomy in this situation can be difficult. Yep. Uh, big burr, big size of sheath, and potentially embolization in the outer and the coronary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a perfect example of the useful in eccentric lesion. Mm -hmm. of shockwave therapy. So perhaps, Nikos, you could describe for us a particular concentric lesion mm -hmm. uh, morphology that you've, or a particular case that mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. has been very convincing for you yeah. about I how think, this technology works. I think we, uh, we often uh, experience problems with uh, uh, left main uh, mm -hmm. disease, heavy calcification of the left main, mm -hmm. distal left main disease, uh, especially the the ostium of the uh, circ is sometimes right. very tough to right. dilate. I think we all have the experience that we have some underexpanded stents in these situations where we didn't uh, do uh, enough lesion preparation. And I think, especially in these situations, bifurcation also difficult in the left main mm -hmm. to rotablate. Um, so I think in this situation it can be really nicely used. And I have a couple of uh, nice cases in mind uh, where we did um, uh, shockwave in the cir in the ostial circ, in the ostial LAD and left main, um, sometimes even with uh, mechanical support, and you get really good results, really nicely expanded um, mm -hmm. stands, especially in these uh, complicated uh, uh, regions. So just from a safety perspective, um, so in these more complex cases, so left main disease, perhaps there's a blocked right coronary and poor left ventricular function, you're describing cases with that percutaneous LV support. Yes. Do you think there are any safety advantages of having a shock a shockwave approach to treating left main disease, disease as opposed to perhaps rotational atherectomy or other forms of calcium modification? I think uh, the main advantage is that it's a very uh, quick procedure. Um, you, you're working with a rapid exchange balloon. You inflate, uh, you use a balloon in a one-to-one -one size to the vessel. You inflate it only to four atmospheres. And then you have a couple of seconds where you have no flow, of course, in the vessel. Uh, but the result is that you have excellent lesion preparation. Mm -hmm. So I think the ischemia time is much short shorter when okay. you look at it uh, compared to going with different balloon sizes, different uh, 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 quality of balloons, uh, ending up in a high pressure balloon, maybe for a couple of seconds as well. So I think that's from a safety aspect. Yes, I think it's, uh, it's so an advantage. Do you think there's an advantage of being able to keep a wire down both limbs of a bifurcation or even a trifurcation? Of course, of yeah. course that's an Another important point, mm -hmm. uh, you can keep the wire uh, in every vessel you want um, and you can use shockwave in parallel. Mm -hmm. So is, as your use develops and how you're doing more cases, have you developed in your mind a, an algorithm for how, how you would treat a, a calcified lesion and wh where does IVL fit into that algorithm? Uh, it's a good question. I think there is some situation where atelectomy is necessary, is mandatory, because nothing is going through. Mm -hmm. But what is very surprising is the profile of the balloon, mm -hmm. despite the presence of the emitter, that the profile mm -hmm. is quite good. Yeah. And so I don't hesitate to use it in, in my first intention as I see calcification I see. on you. 
And if I have to make some intravascular guidance, sure. I will use it as uh, the arc of calcium yeah. is more than 180 degrees. So in, it really changed my daily practice, really. So, so what, what you're saying is that you would have an IVL first strategy, that if, if you, that would be your go-to first method of calcium okay. modification. Definitely. Okay. It, can, it changed my practice for plaque preparation in calcium lesion. And then in what proportion of cases uh, perhaps you could you could answer this, Nikos. Do you think it's not possible to cross the calcific lesion? Is it is it a large proportion or is it just a small a small fraction? I think I think it's actually a small fraction. Uh, you already mentioned that. Um, I think the profile is very favorable, mm -hmm. but of course there is some let's say there are some lesions where you can't cross the balloon. But on the other side, uh, side I have experience also with very tight lesions where I used the rotor blader but the rotor blader didn't open up the lesion completely, so I used shockwave in addition, mm -hmm. which is also something which you can um, think of. And in this case, we were successful with first mm -hmm. rotor ablation, allowing the balloon to pass, and mm -hmm. then doing uh, the shockwave procedure, opening up the artery. So in a way, they're, com they're complementary strategies. Yes. So, so there's going, they're going to be a proportion of cases where you yes. use both. Maybe both. 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 Yes. Yeah. Are there any particular techniques that you're using to increase the crossing uh, I mean complex PCI is, is almost a sort of growing subspecialty now what, what are the sort of adjunct techniques yeah, that you're you using? You can use all the adjunctive techniques that you have in your daily practice in CAD lab you can it's compatible with the guiding extension mm -hmm. guiding extension of catheter it's compatible with body wire as you told and mm -hmm. we can keep the body wire for the therapy mm -hmm. and so it's very useful and in the clinical study, we were allowed to predilate with a small balloon. If the, if the shockwave balloon doesn't cross first, you can predilate with a, a two millimeters or 1.5 millimeters to cross right. the lesion. So you can use every tool that you use in your daily practice in your CAT lab. And, and again, the profile of the balloon is very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you had any problems at all with, with shockwave? I mean, it, do, you, do you think it's a safe device to, to use? Yeah, I think it's a safe device. I didn't experience any um, real problems. Uh, uh, we had a balloon which uh, bursted because the, uh, the uh, calcium was very sharp, sharp. and, uh, and uh, tight. Um, but there was no, no problem for that mm -hmm. with that. Um, so we could proceed with the procedure, took another balloon and uh, um, opened up the artery mm -hmm. and the ca cracked the calcium. I mean, I think the message that came through from the CAD1 the CAD2 study, and I think we'll see with all the real-world data, is that the safety profile, yes. in comparison to other forms of calcium modification, is is outstandingly good. Yeah. So I think it's it's a it's a durable technology from a safety perspective. Um, do you think that you will be using it for a higher proportion of your cases? I mean, what would you predict would be the per percentage of the mm. total, your total PCI volume that you would u use this device? I, I think, uh, when I may start, I think um, that if you see an angio, a calcified lesion, um, I think the primary strategy should be the uh, shockwave balloon at the mm -hmm. moment. I think it's, it's, as you said, it's very safe, it's very effective. Uh, you don't do harm to the vessel, yeah. um, and uh, you get a very nice lesion preparation. Mm -hmm. So, um, according to the, what you already said, I think it, it should be a first-line strategy in these uh, severely calcified lesions. And as calcific lesion will be increased in the future mm -hmm. because of diabetes, because advanced age, yeah. I think it's a useful tool in your care lab. It's mm -hmm. very easy. You say it's very safe. Mm -hmm. It's very safe mm -hmm. comparing to debulking therapy mm -hmm. in the study that we have. So. I think it's something that you should have in your cat lab in a daily practice. Do you think every cat lab should have shockwave? <laughs> I think calcium is the worst enemy of interventional cardiologists. Mm -hmm. So you have to a good tool yeah. to fight them. And, and to fight calcium, I think shockwave is a good one. And it's a tool you, you need in every cat lab then? Well, actually, I think it's a, it's a tool what you u what are you using for complex PCI? Yeah. Because if you have heavy calcification, you're um, uh, more or less into complex PCI. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be should, you should have some education or have a program running where you have complex PCI cases. 
but in a way it makes complex PCI Easy. much simpler. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's been a great discussion. Um, I think we're going to see a whole uh, range of presentations, um, not just in coronaries. I mean, we've been talking about coronaries, but there is the activity in the peripheral sphere, so femoral and below the knee. Um, there is also interest in the aortic valve. Um, I think there are training sessions on the use of um, shockwave in conjunction with uh, femoral implanted you know, percutaneous LV support. So I think there are the applications, not just in the coronaries, but in the whole of the uh, vascular system, I think, uh, I think the very exciting times ahead for, for Shockwave. Thank so thank you. Um, so goodbye from uh, EuroPCR 2019, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>